Good day and welcome to the channel. So today we're going to have a, a proper look around my vehicle. Um, I've got a Ford Ranger as you can see, it's a 3.2 uh, 2016 model and we've had it from new and over the last couple of years we've added on all the little bits to really take it to a, a touring vehicle, an overland vehicle. That's, that's what we the kind of trips we've gone and that's kind of how we wanted to set it up and rig it out. Um, there's not a lot that we change when we go on our trips. Um, depending if it's a longer trip or a shorter trip, there's a few little things, but um, the way it's set up now to show you guys is, is pretty much how we would go on our trips to Botswana. Um, we also pull trailer, as you know, but today we're gonna have a, a proper look at the actual vehicle itself. Okay, so this is our RSI kitchen. Um, it's an absolute dream when we're going away. As you know, we tow, tra uh, tow trailers, so often we go out for game drives and we won't be taking the trailer. So having this on board is just fantastic. We don't have to remember anything. All we do is take, make sure our water, make sure we got some milk, which is normally in the fridge, and away we go. Have a look, everything's nicely stowed. We've got a kettle, some Tupperwares here for some of your, your coffee and other loose items. On this side here, we've got all of our uh, glasses as well as our cups and wine glasses as well for those sunset drives. All our plates. And on the other side here, we've got our rest of our cutlery. So to pull the uh, gas stove out, flops down like that very easily. You can see underneath here, we've got our gas connector and also a board. So let's take that out, just flop it down. And as you can see now, you've got everything you need from your steak knives to forks, spoons, cereal spoons from the morning, um, bread knives, most importantly the kettle, and uh, salt and pepper as well. So they've really thought of everything. It's a very clever design. Everything fits in here nice and neatly and everything has its place. So you'll see, see as soon as something's missing. We've also got a light in here, which is really great. In the evening, even when we're back at camp, if we need something and we either don't have it or you know, it's uh, dirty and haven't done the washing up yet. We just snip in here and get out what we need. Just remember to put it back before you go in the morning. Packing it away, super simple as well. Folds in. You'll see that this just stays inside there. Folds away. Close up the side. Back bumper of choice is the M series hammer bumper. Uh, we've chose this bumper just because it fits really nicely, nice and strong. Um, it takes the standard uh, PDCs, which are really nice as well. And it's got integrated uh, reverse lights and indicators. Everything else is pretty much uh, uh, standard on it. High lift, high lift jacking point, which is great as well. Um, and then obviously we've got our normal trailer hookups, um, Anderson plug to charge the trailer while we're driving. Uh, but yeah, nice piece of kit. Um, and this this far it's really taken taken a bit of a beating and it's really done well and we're very happy with it Okay, so our front bumper we've gone for the King series hammer bumper to match up with the back one um, Again, just a really nice fitting bumper. Um, it's given us a hell of a lot of extra clearance on the front here, which is uh, something we really needed um, Some nice features it again takes the the PDC's standard so you can fit those in my range didn't come with them So I obviously nothing in there um, just holders for the for the shackles here, which is quite a nice little added thing. Note, this is not a recovery point. Uh, please use the recovery points underneath the vehicle if you're going to. It's got a high lift jack mount, uh, point here as well, which is nice. And then I don't have a winch at the moment, but it can have a winch fitted as well, which is really, really good. We might look at doing that at a later stage. Now we travel with uh, friends and that sort of thing. So just really haven't felt that we needed that. Um, on this side here, we've got the fog lights and then daytime running lights and indicator lights, which is really, really great. Okay, and then mounted on top, we've got our steady uh, seven inch uh, spotlights. Um, really, really good piece of kit. Uh, good value for money, um, very well made, and uh, yeah, we just love them. So at the moment, I've got the full blank covers on, which are quite nice. You get some of the little smiley face, which is quite cool as well. Um, but very easy just to swap out. You just pull the front like this. They pop off and you put your clear ones on. So super simple. 
Um, we've also, on my Ranger, replaced this front grille for a black one. The reason we did that because the chrome just really, really fit in nicely with the front bumper and the kind of black and white that we've got. Um, so that was just a swap out, but we did fit the standard grille. So yeah, overall, very happy with the lights. Great lights, and I would definitely hit them again. Well, side steps, we've gone with the wild dog side steps. Um, good piece of kit, really simple. Uh, got some uh, leading edge down here, you know, for the rocks and that sort of thing. As I said, we don't really do a lot of rock driving, so nothing too serious there. But um, yeah, gave you that extra clearance. The standard side steps that come on this vehicle are a lot lower um, and just the simplest bit of off-roading and you're hitting those things straight away. So I think that uh, a little tip for anybody looking to do their vehicle up and, and do a, a few things to it. Obviously, you know, tires is a big thing. You need to really think about that from the start. Um, from there, I would, I would look at swapping out the side steps straight away. You know, they're not usually expensive, so it's something that you can do early on. Um, but yeah, tires and, and the side steps is something I would look at straight away. From there, you can go on to suspension. Um, and for the suspension, we've, we uh, chose the um, EFS um, Elite suspension. I'm very happy with it. Uh, we went with a 300 kg constant load on the rear. Um, and it's a little hard, you know, obviously unloaded, but not uncomfortable, very happy with it. And it tows like an absolute dream. You know, it, with, with the weight once we loaded, going somewhere fully loaded, it, it really just handles perfectly. Um, no complaints at all and um, yeah corrugated roads and that sort of thing let the tires down a little bit just to absorb that uh, bit of extra um, corrugation through the vehicle um, and then with suspension like that it, it's really 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 good and you know we don't have any complaints so happy with that okay so we decided to fit the coopers the st maxes um, really great tire it's a little bit more aggressive than an all-terrain tire which is really nice um, <clears throat> Really, really strong, thick sidewalls. Uh, these have done probably 60 or 70,000 Ks already. Um, and judging by the tread, I reckon we'll get another 20,000 or so out of them. Um, they've taken some knocks on the sidewalls, but nothing nothing uh, serious or pretty superficial. Um, and yeah, I've just really been, been happy with them. Um, all in all, good tire. Um, we're running Rhino, Rhino rims. Uh, these are 18 inch and in hindsight i think that um, on the next vehicle we'll look at fitting probably 17s maybe 16s even a little bit of a higher profile much better um but overall good we we can lower it down to you know some really low pressures for the sand um <clears throat> we don't do a lot of uh you know rock driving and that sort of thing so um not had too much experience with that but in terms of the sand and just a reliable tire been very happy and it copes well you know obviously when we load it up with the trailer and all that sort of thing um you know it's under a bit under a bit of weight and it seems to cope very well with that and um, doesn't get hot or anything like that so yeah overall very happy and uh, definitely recommend it if you're looking for a tire okay so let's look at the back of the vehicle um as you know we're running a rsi canopy and we've really been happy with this canopy it's absolutely fabulous piece of equipment um I had the previous one on here, which was the TUV model. And uh, since then, uh, we've put on the uh, Evo um, and just some nice uh, changes, a bit of change in design. You can see here, uh, just got some new curves, which is really nice, really suits the back of the vehicle. Um, and I think with the new vehicles coming out and uh, this being a very popular canopy, there will be a lot of people um, looking to put them on. So very simple, just two catches, the other side will open up. Um, on our tailgate, we've got a tailgate assist. So that just lets it uh, drop down nice and slowly. If your kids come along, they open the tailgate. These are quite heavy, um, so it could hurt them if it hits them on the head. So as you can see, that just goes down really nice and slowly um, to that point. So in the back side of the vehicle here, we've got a front runner draw system. On top of that, we've got our uh, Alucab fridge slide. And in that, we've got a 60 liter natural lunar fridge. I have two fridges. I have this one here, and we have another 90 liter a uh, twin fridge in the metallian trailer so we generally use this one as a freezer um, and the reason why i choose to use this as a freezer is because when we out on trips and game drives and that we're always running the vehicle so it's it's the fridge that's gonna have to work the hardest um it's keeping things frozen plus obviously most of the time we're in, in a hot climate so it, it really does have to work a lot harder than it would if it was just set as a fridge um so we we've driving the vehicle more so therefore the battery is getting replenished a lot more 
Whereas on the trailer, the trailer is generally in, a, in one place for a couple of days, possibly. And um, then we, you know, trying to keep that, that uh, fully charged using the solar. So this is very easy. It just gets pulled out and then you lift it up and it drops down. So it's a tilting slide, which just allows us to get into the fridge, um, which is really nice. So from here, you can obviously just get, in, get into it and um, get whatever you need. I'll generally keep the stuff that obviously we're going to use first at the top, make it a little bit easier. Um, and the stuff that really needs to stay frozen longer, we put right, right at the bottom. Really great piece of kit. And we've also got an actual loon in our trailer. So, drawer system, absolutely, absolutely awesome. Um, a lot of people go for different options here. This really just suited us a lot better. Um, pulls all the way out to there. And generally what we'll use this one for is all our dry food. So we'll put all our dry food in here. You'll be very surprised of how cool it is actually at this back compartment and um, because it's right at the back of the canopy and, and right down the bottom it stays very cool and i'll generally keep our wine and and a few other things that need to need to stay cool um, in this part of the drawer in the other drawer the other side i generally put my my camera equipment um in deflate you know the things i like to get uh, get to really quickly um because there's nothing going to be packed on top here you know so um, a lot of guys have ammo boxes and they're really good and we, we run some on the top but when you start packing them on top of each other here and you need to get to one right at the bottom it, it does become a little bit difficult so this just suited us better um, and because we pull a trailer uh, the amount of space that we have using the, utilizing the system was absolutely fine we've also got a RSI a table smart table so this is uh, mounted into the roof here um, it just drops down and pulls out really easily um, and it's just great to have it all the time it's always there we never take it out unless we're using it at a, at a campsite or out if we're having breakfast on you know on a game drive or something like that um, and then I've also just put some extra lights and that sort of thing in the back so lights here we've got another one another one inside inside the canopy um, and then one that you would have seen on, on the kitchen already Okay, so to keep our fridge powered as well as our uh, lights and USB chargers, you know, charging cameras and that sort of thing, uh, we've got a secondary battery that we've uh, put right to the um, front of the drawer system. So it's right up against the cab there. There's a nice little gap. It fits in there perfectly um, and also a fairly cool place, which is quite nice as well and what you want for a battery. Um, I don't really like putting a battery in the engine bay just from the heat point of view. Um, they tend to not perform as well. So... This is a nice option and unfortunately in the Ranger, it's the only option anyway. There's no space in the in the engine bay for another battery. Uh, so we've gone with a 90 amp hour mixed tech battery. And then for our DC to DC charging system, we've gone with the CTEC D250, which is a 20 amp hour charger. Um, everything works very well. Um, we've been very happy with it. Uh, but recently we decided that we will uh, chuck in the, the smart pass. Um, so this is a, adds an extra 120 amps to the to the charging capacity, um, which is going to be very interesting. We obviously haven't tested it out, but um, from what I hear, it works very well. So we'll be doing a full installation of that fairly shortly. Um, we're also going to take out all the wiring that was initially in there and replace it with a much bit, much thicker cable. Um, when you put this uh, smart pass in, they recommend I think it's like 30 to 32 more cabling there. So we're going to be taking out all the old stuff, putting brand new cabling in as well as brand new fuses. Okay, so we also uh, run a, a solar panel for when we need it. If the vehicle stationary for quite a long time, then we'll hook that up. Otherwise, we pretty much just use that uh, 200 watt solar panel on the trailer. Um, it, it puts out about uh, 10 to 12 amps um, on a good day, uh, which, which really works well for us and keeps us going over an extended period. Up top here, we've got our uh, front runner Slimline 2 rack system. I've got a spade, and this is where I like to keep it. Obviously, it gets dirty, so it's a nice place to put it. It's out of the way. Um, and again, just really easy to, to get to if you need it, whether that be for recovery or, you know, at, at camp uh, and you've got to dig a hole for a fire. Um, as you can see, we've got a front runner, a front runner Slimline 2 rack. Um, with that, we've got uh, two containers. This first one that's yellow is a diesel container, 45 liter. Quite a new thing from Funrunner, which I'm keen to try out. We haven't tried it yet. This is, this is new, we just got it the other day. Um, and then on the other side, 
we've got a, a 45 liter water tank. Now the water tank will generally keep that just for drinking water. Um, it's 45 liters. Um, on our longer trips, we'll take a bit of extra water in the vehicle. Um, but the water that we put in our trailer is used for just washing up, showering, that sort of thing. Um, we don't mix between the two, obviously, because a lot of the camps we go to, especially in Botswana and that, we don't know what the quality of the water is coming out of the taps. So any water we put in the trailer out of the taps is just for washing up and, uh, and um, showering, that sort of thing. And then the water that we put on top there is our drinking water. And as I say, we'll have a, uh, we'll have a bit of spare in the car itself. So on the top there, we've also got our Max Tracks. Um, and over here, as you can see, we've got our um, ammo boxes. We don't always run them up there. It just depends on what we've got to take. Um, but if I've got some brass stuff and dirty things, I like to chuck them in the ammo boxes and just put them on top, stays out the way. Um, and often I'll put my ground sheet bag up there because it's always dirty and full of sand. So I don't really want to be putting it in the back um, or on the trailer for that matter. So we'll just chuck it up top of the Max Tracks and strap it down. Um, We've also got an uh, iCamper tent. Um, this is the SkyCamp Mini. Um, if you haven't seen the video on the SkyCamp Mini, please have a look at look at that. I'll link it in the description below. Um, we are going to just have a quick look at that shortly anyway. The setup for us and the best in this scenario at the moment is front runner Slimline 2 on the cab, uh, the tent mounted um, onto that. And then up, I like putting this stuff on the top of this slimline rack on top of the canopy and the reason for that is the diesel and the dirty stuff it's so much better for the mess is yeah not where you're getting in and out of your vehicle the whole time um, and i also like to try to keep the majority of the weight over the back axle so you can see uh, i've placed this very nicely at the front pretty much on the back axle a little bit forward actually um, but not hanging over the back and not not uh, forward on the on the front of the vehicle so if I'm going to put things on the on the rack, I'll put the lighter things there. The Skycam Mini only weighs about 54 kgs, so nice and light. Here on our own, we've got 45 kgs. Not to mention, obviously, the other side, another 45, um, and then ammo boxes, and, and then the slimline rack as well. So this just setup works best for us. Um, and I certainly don't like to load a lot of weight on the vehicle, like most people don't. Um, so I'll keep it as light as I can. Having these side going doors are just such a pleasure. You know, getting anything into the in the canopy is always difficult when you're having to lean right from the back forward. Um, so this this is just great, and one of the, the features I really really like about these side going doors on all of these canopies, not just the RSR, but it's, it's really really just such a convenience sort of factor here. So from here we can get everything in, which is really nice. Um, and I'll generally load uh, stuff that I don't need to often that side because it's a little bit more difficult to get to and the stuff I'm going to get straight away when I get out of camp um, chairs and that sort of thing I keep the side um, and anything else that I might need straight away once we arrive as you can see on the top I've got the, the water tank here um, I'll run my pipe down like this um, and then at the back here we'll have our, have our tap and I'll normally just make a little gardenia fitting with a hose, hose on it just so it's a little bit easier to fill up our water containers. Okay, so this is the SkyCamp Mini. This is what we've got fitted to the vehicle at the moment. As I said, we swap between a few different tents um, just because we are the distributor so we get to try out all the new stuff and we're um, really fortunate for that. Um, but right now, set up kind of the way that I think we're going to go um, on the next trip. Um, the only difference is if we're going to run a 4x or something bigger on here then you'll see that we'll run that smaller rack at the back because the 4x is quite a bit longer so it'll come down here somewhere um, and we'll need to run the smaller rack. Still get to uh, keep the, the uh, fuel container and the, and the water container on top as well as the max tracks um, but the, the actual um, ammo boxes are a little bit too big to put up there as well. So yeah, this is how we go. I'm going to open this up and just show you through quick. Really a quick and simple setup, and that's what we really love about these sort of hard shell tents so much. Hop up here, grab the strap, pull this right out. From here, you just leave this up from the top. Get it to a nice 70 degree angle here so that it's uh, supporting the pull very nicely. And then you can head on up and grab the spring rod. Okay, so now we've got the spring rods, we put the mat pull the mattress forward. There's uh, six spring rods here. 
What I like to do is just keep the two that I need for the front door with their hooks facing to the top and the others the other way around. So I can straight away tell which ones I need. Very simple and straightforward. And here we go. Okay, so we've got it all set up now. Um, we just really enjoy the Sky Camps. They're just really simple, easy to set up, and um, they just don't weigh a lot. So that's uh, really a big bonus for me. Um, and then the quick setup is really just just fantastic. Um, we're gonna close this up quickly so you can just see how, how easy that is. Super quick. From here we just push and flip it over. These are just to help pull in the material, just to make your life a little bit easier. Very easy, very straightforward, um, that's why we love them. Okay, thanks so much for joining us today. We hope you enjoyed the walk around our Ranger um, and how we've kitted it out. This is our preference and what we like personally. Um, obviously your your sort of uh, setup will be different to ours and um, we'd like to hear more about that or if you've got any questions for us on why we've done what we've done, please comment below. We'd be happy to answer them. And uh, please support us by liking this video and subscribing to our channel. Um, and we hope to see you out there.